choose love now. What does that mean? So let's break it down. The first word, choose. If you think about even me looking out at you today, my experience of it, it's different of what you're experiencing looking up at me here today. Even though it's the same exact event, it's the same circumstances, it's gonna be different for each one of us, right? So we can either consciously choose these thoughts or we can let them go by an autopilot a little bit more. So this first word choose, it really just wakes us up to this idea that it is a choice. Love. Everything is either love or it's fear. And this is something that comes from a text called A Course in Miracles, which, which some of you might be familiar with. And if not, it's really that basic in that it states that everything boils down to love or fear. And to help me understand it more, I understand that as it's, everything's either a shade of love. So you think about a spectrum almost. And you think about this top side of the spectrum. It's just a shade of those loving thoughts, a shade of those loving feelings, those loving aspects. So it might not be love in the traditional sense that we think of romantic love or the love that you have your family, but it's love in that it's that higher, higher vibrating, more positive shade. Whereas fear is going to be kind of that that bottom shade of the spectrum. And so it doesn't mean it's just that fear of, you know, uh, the boogeyman. Uh, we were talking earlier actually about haunted houses and literally being scared. And of course there's that kind of fear, but there's also the fear that's, am I good enough? The fear that, you know, um, is someone judging me? Am I judging myself? All those are shades of that fear. And so the Course in Miracles also states that not only does it just boil down to love and fear, but love is the only reality. And fear is only an illusion. That might be a tough pill to swallow because when we're in our fear, it feels pretty darn real. So for someone to say, well, what do you mean? What do you mean this fear is an illusion? I, 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 I don't buy it. What if though, what if that were the truth? What if for a moment we just accepted that, that love is the only real truth, and that fear, it's just an illusion. How empowering, how much more amazing could our lives be when we realize when we come up against these thoughts, these experiences that we see as that fearful shade, that we're like, I recognize that, I, I, you know, I'm not going to deny that I don't <laughs> see this, but I recognize that it is not the real truth. And then finally, now, the reason it's so important, at least to me, in the way that I believe it, in the way that I see it, is that now is the only real time. And here's what I mean by that. If you think about the past, and by the past, I don't even necessarily mean, you know, back in when you were a child. I literally mean, think about the beginning of this presentation. You're not experiencing it now. It's just a memory. Or sometimes you're thinking about the past and maybe it's regret. But either way, it's no longer real in you now. And the same goes for the future. If it's something that's exciting you, if it's something that's positive, well, then it's a fantasy, right? But maybe it's something that you're not looking so forward to, and it's a worry. But either way, it's still floating around up here. It's not real. You can't feel it. You can't really experience it. So now, being the only real time, bringing this all together to choose love now, what you're doing is you're empowering yourself to see that everything is either love or fear and that you have the choice right now in this moment, not a moment sooner, not a moment later, to actually go about creating that more joyful life, that more meaningful life. So sure that's all great, but really, how do we practice this? So go ahead and close your eyes now. Imagine in your mind's eye two little miniature versions of yourself, one on each shoulder. And on one shoulder, you have that devil version of you. So it's got your face, it's got your body, it's a little mini you, but it's got those devil's horns got that pitchfork, maybe a sneaky looking grin. 
and then on that other shoulder. I want you to imagine that angel version of you. Again, it looks just like you, but that beautiful halo, the angel's wings, that angelic glow. I'm going to count down in just a moment, and I'm gonna count down from three to one. And when I do, I want you to actually speak out loud. We're all gonna be speaking at once, so don't be embarrassed, but I want you to speak out loud the name of your devil. So, ready with me? I'm gonna count down. Three, two, one. Perfect, I heard some great mumbled devil names. We'll do better on the other one. But that's wonderful. And again, whatever came out is perfect. So tune back in. See that angel again in your shoulder. That's your face, it's you. And again, I'm gonna count down in just a moment. And I want you to really, the first name that pops to your mind, it may be a nonsensical word, it doesn't have to make sense. But I want you to go ahead and just speak it out loud in just a moment. Okay, ready? Three, two, one. Name that angel. Amen. Perfect. I heard a lot of great names. What we're going to do now is we're going to start to actually use that voice of the angel, that voice of the devil. Because the voice of the devil on your shoulder, it's not really the devil. It's just the voice of your ego. It's the voice of fear. On the other hand, the voice of your angel, that whatever name that just popped into your mind, well, that's the voice of your intuition. That's the voice of love. So to choose love now is, one, it's to listen just more to that voice of your intuition. Trust it more. That's how you strengthen it. That's how you choose it. So when I named my devil, the first word that came to mind was uh, shenene. And <laughs> so, like I said, it doesn't make sense. So shenene, though, has become this it's almost, you know, it makes you laugh. It's this funny thing because it's this word that popped up, but now I recognize it. I don't, I don't take it so personally now when Shanene comes up in my life and starts saying things to me. And the voice of my angel, her name is Astrid. Again, I don't know. It sounds like an angel, and it just it popped in my mind. So these are my two voices, and I trusted it. And the way that I play with it in my own life, and then I invite you to play with it in your own life, is to begin first by listening to that voice of your own Shanene your own voice of your ego, your voice of fear, because usually that's the one that's the loudest, right? And so you start listening to that voice and noticing what it says, noticing the little, you know, because we all have these voices in our head, you don't deny it, but it's chiming in on almost every conversation we have and every thought we have, every action we take, it always has something to say. So we can listen to it. And usually when we really listen to it, there's a little nugget of truth in there. But the only way we can get to that nugget of truth is by shining the light of love onto it. And that's by allowing our angel, our Astrid, to have a conversation. So I'll just give you one example from my own life. Whenever I was asked to be a part of this conference, my shenene, my ego, my fear, said to me, who are you? Who are you to stand in front of them and tell them all about love? Who are you to, you know, tell them to choose love now? What's your, are you, are you some famous uh, person who talks about this? Are you an author or something? You, got, you know, what, what do you have to share? You know, we all get that inner voice, that who are you to, right? And so I could have just let that be, oh, okay, you're right. Mm, nobody, oh, no thank you. Really great opportunity, but no thank you. But what I did was I played with it. I said, okay, well, that's Shanene. I hear you. I hear you. Maybe there's something to be said for that. Astrid, what do you have to say? And so Astrid talks to Shanene and says, okay, where's the nugget of truth here? Okay, well, maybe, maybe you're not some established author, some established speaker on this topic. That's fine. There's your nugget of truth. You're right. Got you on that one. But just like you, we all deserve to be heard. And so that was the truth. That was the love that empowered me to come through. And that's the only reason I'm standing here before you today was because I was able to have that conversation in a fun and playful way. So I invite you to do the same. Whatever you've named this angel, this devil, the name itself doesn't matter. But what you've done is you've become more conscious now of the power that you have to choose love now in your own life.